Hey, misadventure aficionados! Brace yourselves for an exclusive journey into the bonus content for Gretchen's Misadventures Episode 9, An Elvish Sweatshop. In today's video, we're unveiling not one but two deleted scenes, offering you a glimpse into the cutting room floor and showcasing a character illustration that adds a touch of magic to the mischievous tale. Get ready to dive deep into the Elvish enchantment. A plea for help. But you have to help! Piper bunched her fists at her sides and glared at the woman Gretchen said was her sister. From what she could see, they were nothing alike, and Piper couldn't figure out why she didn't seem upset at the news of the arrest. I can't get her out. I'm only a kid. Vice-Chancellor Mirkwood sat behind her desk with a ghost of a smile on her lips. If my sister has gotten herself arrested, it's her responsibility to prove her innocence. The Witch's Academy obeys the rule of law like any other. My concern is for your welfare. I can barely see you from that drought you've taken. It will take hours yet for you to become fully visible. But the elves! There's nothing to be done at this hour, and I'll have no more arguments. You didn't even listen. Enough! Vice-Chancellor Mirkwood snapped. In the morning, I'll speak to the elves myself and get a firm account of what has happened. It's clear the wretches are traumatised. I'll make sense of their babbling in the clear light of day and decide how to proceed. In the meantime, it's your situation we must discuss. Piper folded her arms and regretted having come to the academy in the first place. If she'd followed Gretchen to the dungeons, she might have slipped the key from a guard and busted her free. As a budding witch, your place is here at the Academy. I've read the report from Christmas Eve, and it's clear you've come into your powers. Unless you are taught to properly harness the magic inside you, the threat of another incident remains. She took a deep breath. Living with my sister is hardly appropriate. You should be here among your peers, getting a proper education. Gretchen said I was too young, Piper protested, and I like living with her. She teaches me all kinds of things. She even wants me to go to school somewhere in the city. See? She's trying to do the right thing, even if it is a dumb idea. A dumb idea? Vice-Chancellor Mirkwood's eyebrows knitted together. You don't see the value in knowledge. I'd rather learn useful stuff. Piper chewed her lip, wondering if she was somehow betraying Gretchen by admitting she'd rather learn magic. I already know how to read and do sums. Then you should be here. The Vice-Chancellor steepled her fingers on her desk. Oh, yeah. Anger flared in Piper's belly. I saw you in the marketplace. I know you were blackmailing Gretchen into sending me here. She doesn't have the money to pay for the trouble I caused. It shouldn't be her problem. It's me who should have to pay it back. But you used that to get her to do what you wanted. The Vice-Chancellor's jaw dropped, and she was silent for a moment before she gestured for Piper to sit. Grudgingly, Piper dropped onto the velvet upholstered chair with a rigid jaw. Members of the Academy are charged with resolving magical problems in the Kingdom and act as agents when incidents occur. It was Gretchen's responsibility to get the plague of Krampuses under control. She spoke carefully, as if trying to impress each word on her. You were a part of the events, and it remains her responsibility to ensure that no more magical mishaps occur. I only ask that you come to the Academy to learn. What if I agree? Tears welled in Piper's eyes. I'll work off the debt myself, just so long as you go and save Gretchen from prison. The Vice-Chancellor searched her face, and Piper saw emotion in her features. Sniffling, she hoped the woman would agree. You could go back to Edgewater on semester breaks, maybe even a weekend or two. Vice-Chancellor Cordelia offered a half-smile. I can't make any promises about freeing her until I have all the facts. I can come every day. If she's released, I can fly with Gretchen to the city each morning and be here on time. I can't leave Monty behind, and if I'm always here, Gretchen might get lonely, and she promised to teach me how to... Piper clicked her teeth shut, thinking it wouldn't be wise to let on about pranking spells. Vice-Chancellor Cordelia pressed her lips together in a thin line and narrowed her eyes. I don't know who Monty is or what spells my sister is teaching you, but in the morning we'll see what we can do. Really? Piper sprang up from her chair. You'll get her out? Sighing, the woman across the desk shook her head, at once looking weary and resigned. I'll try. Beyond freedom. She won't eat us. 
Bertie threw up his hands and rolled his eyes. All she's done since I climbed into her pouch is help. Then what are all those cauldrons for, hmm? Terence, the eldest of their party, grumbled. Bertie sagged against a terracotta pot and bemoaned having the same argument day and night with his newly released peers. She's a wise woman, one who sells cures. We are safe here. I've no wish to return to the Arctic where we'll only wait to be recaptured by slavers. Any mention of slavers brought about a fragile silence and Bertie pressed on with what he knew would lift their spirits. But Piper, she is our champion. So long as we are near her, we won't come to harm. The witch listens to her, does almost everything she says. Terence nodded reluctantly, as did the rest of their party. I suppose that's true, he conceded. These big folk are strange. I can't understand why it seems like the little ones are in charge. Nettle laced her fingers in Bertie's, and though she was usually the quietest among them, she spoke up. I believe she is a child prodigy, powerful beyond all others. You saw what happened. The witch was captured almost as soon as she arrived. In a cloak of invisibility, the young one achieved what the witch could not. Bertie grinned at Nettle, thankful for her support. Exactly. Piper's got talents we can't fathom. And she's kind to us. She saved us from the slavers for Merlin's sake. Terence scratched his head, his scepticism lingering. But why help us? What does she gain from it? Nettle shrugged, her gaze fixed on the enormous cauldron simmering nearby. Maybe she's lonely, or maybe she just likes us. Bertie chuckled. Who wouldn't like us? We're a charming bunch. The group shared a laugh, and the tension that had gripped them loosened slightly. They had been through so much together, from the frozen tundras to the boiling deserts, and now they found themselves in the care of a young girl who wielded magical powers. As they sat around the makeshift campfire in the witch's garden, Piper approached her eyes sparkling with curiosity. She had a mischievous grin, and her fingers danced in the air, leaving traces of multicoloured sparks. Bertie, Nettle, Terence, Piper greeted them, her voice a melody of friendliness. I've been working on something special for you. The elves stood hastily and gave a bow as they murmured greetings. You really don't have to do that, you know, she tittered. You're free now, remember? Of course. Bertie stood hastily. How may we be of, um, how are you this fine day? I'm great. Here, let me show you what I've been working on. Piper reached into her satchel and pulled out small vials filled with shimmering liquid. For courage, she said, handing one to each of them. And for luck. Terence tugged at his collar and gulped. The witch didn't happen to suggest you give those to us, did she? Gretchen, Piper snorted. Of course not. I've been poking around in her spellbook while she's been napping and practising my potions. Promise not to tell. I thought you could use some for your first day of work at the silversmiths. The adventurers looked at the vials, their doubts fading away. Piper had an aura of innocence that disarmed them, and they couldn't help but trust her. Thank you, Piper, Nettle said, her gratitude evident in her eyes. Piper winked. No worries. You've got my back, and I've got yours. And finally, a bonus illustration by Rod Savely, showing Bertie taking Gretchen by surprise. We hope you enjoyed the deleted scenes, the behind-the-scenes magic, and the captivating character illustration from episode 9, An Elvish Sweatshop. If you're hungry for more mischievous delights and exclusive behind-the-scenes treasures, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Until next time... May your days be filled with magic, mischief and a touch of elvish enchantment.